Hello my friends, HM here. In this video we are going to make rhubarb compote. And if you don't know what that is, then you're really missing out. You have to taste that before you die. It's very special, it's so delicious. You can eat it together with a white bread that you have roasted and then some butter on and then you just eat this rhubarb compote with a teaspoon. I'll show you how to make it. It's super easy. And right now we have, what is it? It's May 6, 2024. And the season for rhubarb, and I have them right here, the season for these starts in late April and then it goes through all of May and then it's over the season then you can't get it in the shops or supermarkets anymore but right now you should be able to get it and of course you can make a lot of it so you can store it for the rest of the year but normally when I make it I eat it so I only have it this time of the year but anyway I'll show you how this is done we have to clean this up get rid of all the stuff we are not going to eat and then we have to chug it up and mix it together with a lot of sugar and some vanilla uh, that I have here real vanilla I usually buy a lot of vanilla and then I put them in a, a glass with vodka. They stay there. They can stay there for a year or two. And then you get vanilla essence and you can also pick these vanilla things up and get the seeds out of them. And you have to spice the rhubarb compote with this vanilla for it to taste the best. I have some here that I have already cleaned and cut up with a lot of sugar on and I haven't added any water. But all this water you can see that's obviously there, that, that is simply coming out of this rhubarb all by itself when it sits with sugar. And I put it in my refrigerator overnight to do this. It takes some hours for this to happen. And when it looks like this, it's actually ready to be cooked. You should not boil it. You should bring it up to a temperature below the boiling point. I bring it up typically to 80 degrees Celsius and then I just stop. When it's 80 degrees Celsius, then I'll pour it up in some glasses that I will um, close and then I can store it for a year or two. Because it's hot, it will sterilize these glasses, so uh, I don't use any preservation stuff for that. And there's also this high level of sugar in it, so it can be stored for a long time, really. But anyway, let's clean these rhubarb. How do I clean them? I put them in my sink and then we take one out here and then you basically cut the leaves here off and you also cut the root here and then you rub them in water just like this it's, just, it's not rocket science just get the dirt off if there is any dirt do the same thing here so it also doesn't take a whole lot of time also this is not expensive it's a uh, for a bundle like this, I pay like three dollars. I'd almost say the vanilla is more expensive than these Oba. And of course, if you don't want to use real vanilla, I think it tastes better. I have tried it with artificial vanilla. I have it. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, but I have this uh, vanilla essence. You can do that. It won't ruin it at all, but it just tastes better with real vanilla. There are only a few things where I use artificial um, vanilla and simply to save money. With this rhubarb, I can do it if I don't feel like using my real vanilla. And then with pastry stuff, cookies and stuff, then I can also use some artificial vanilla sometimes. But anyway, as you can see, it's super easy to clean these. And then all you do here is you cut them like this in small pieces i'll just show it cut this all the way through okay then you take a stainless steel pot put a lot of sugar in it you don't be shy with the sugar because this is very very sour and you need sugar to make it sweet and then you put sugar again on top and then you do some more, uh, but I think I'll shut down my cameras and then I'll clean up the rest and uh, have it all done. Okay, I have cleaned up my rhubarb and I'll just show you a little more how you cut them and how you put them in the pot there for, yeah, watering out with this sugar. So here you just put more up here and you have a layer. The idea is to put the sugar all around this because then this sugar will start a reaction where it draws out the water so and you can see it's it's quite quick 
doesn't take a lot of time. Just clean this rhubarb and then cut it. Put some sugar on it and add some vanilla. And then again, sugar. Don't be shy. More of this. We have more sugar here. And we need to add even more sugar. I have a bigger thing up here. Okay, then now let me show you how to add some vanilla. Now I have a lot of vanilla down here, but only some of them are still with vanilla corn in it because I use them up and then I put them back into my thing here. But there's corn in this one here. Let me get those corns back and then I put it back in here. You see this one is also, yeah. Let me give it one more. But I think I have already emptied that out. This one looks like it's not used. Okay, I think that's enough. And then all you need to do is to let it sit. And uh, what happens is that this becomes this after 12 hours all by itself so what do we do next let me get this into my refrigerator i simply put it here and then i'll make this tomorrow it comes into my refrigerator but this one is done and let's do that now and there is uh, vanilla and everything in it and then i heat it up and i take my uh, measurement unit here currently it's a 12 degrees Celsius, it's cold. I took it from the refrigerator. 52 degrees Fahrenheit. But I'll get back to it when it's further heated up. I'll turn off my cameras. Okay, I'm back and I've been heating this up for a few minutes and uh, it's getting hotter. And now you can see more water has come out of this rhubarb. I'm putting a little more sugar in it. I know it's, it's crazy, but it does need a lot of sugar. I don't want it to be too sour. It's very intense, the taste of this. It's so good. Now I just need to take a temperature. It's uh, 75 degrees Celsius, 170 degrees Fahrenheit. I want to get it to 80 degrees Celsius, then I'm done. 79, almost there. Maybe I should take it a few more degrees above. Also depends where I shoot. If I shoot here in the edge, it will be hotter than if I shoot here in the middle. But anyway, what I wanted to say that's important is that if you heat it up too much, the whole thing will become one big soup. And that makes it not as delicious as if it stays together in liquid and clearly visible rhubarb pieces. I think it tastes better and the texture is just better than if you boil it up. And then I think you ruin it. So don't do that. And suddenly it goes very fast. Actually, now I think I'll stop. It's 82 degrees Celsius. That's 181 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where we should stop. And I'll do that right now. And I'm using a gas stove, so it, my handles here can actually get quite hot. I have to use this to protect me myself from getting burned. And then all we do is to get this into some glasses. And it will sterilize itself because of the heat. It's the best way to sterilize anything, I believe, instead of using chemicals. And I think I can have it all in two. Now I just need my lid on. And my lid on this one. Get it on fast so that the heat can also sterilize the lid. Okay. I think it's done now. And then it's, it's not really... It's not ready yet. It has to cool down and then you put it in the refrigerator before you eat it. So you serve it totally refrigerated and then you just eat it with a teaspoon 
uh, a little bit of the fruit and and also the juice, and and um, right now the juice is full of sugar and and the meat is still very sour. But after a day, the sugar also gets more into the meat and it will it will all be nice and sweet, sweet sour at the same time. It's so delicious. Uh, I cannot recommend highly enough to go home and make it. That's all I have for this video. Now I only have one thing to say, and that is I wish you a great life and freedom and democracy. Goodbye.